so tired. But I still got a film learning to do. I gotta go to the gym. I gotta walk the dogs. <sighs> I don't think anything's getting me off this couch. We now interrupt your program to bring you all six seasons of Sex in the City. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning you good. Now before we start, I just want to thank everyone for all their well wishes and kind words regarding my baby news, not to mention the fact that the Q&A actually got over a thousand views. I honestly didn't expect that, so thanks once again. Now that we've got that out of the way, looks like we're headed back to Flash Town this week with this request. Jean-Marc asked, I was wondering though, if you could show how to do the electricity in the ice from the Flash TV show. Well, wonder no more, because that's what we're doing today. In fact, we're going to cover the whole pupil dilating and flashing with lightning, just like in episode 7 Power Adage. In order to complete this effect, you need to shoot your actor in a close-up, giving particular focus to the eye region, making sure they stay very still. You'll also need to grab the lightning project file below. We're going to repurpose the lightning from our Flash running episode. So if you already have that, just re-import it right back into After Effects. That's it gang, now let's get to work. Okay gang, I've got my eye shot set up and ready to go. Now right off the bat, you'll notice that my shot isn't anywhere near as close up as the shot of the eye on the show. Unfortunately, that's just a limit of the minimum focal distance on my camera. And by that I mean, you can only get so close to the camera before the camera can't actually rack focus on you. So we'll just work with what we've got. Our first step is to track our footage, because you may have noticed, I don't actually stay still, at all. So let's head up, grab a new null object, select our footage, head over here and click track motion. I'm just going to select this white part here on my eye and then hit the play button. And BAM! We've got our track. Now let's edit our target to our null, hit apply and OK. And that's step one all done. Next we've got to dilate this pupil. So here's a really easy way to do that. Let's select our footage, head up to effect. Distort and add liquify. We'll then select the bloat tool, this one right here, and then crank the brush size up to a point that covers the entire iris. This may vary based on your shot, but my sweet spot is around the 150 mark. We'll then hover right in the middle of the eye and click it a few times until you're happy with the size of your pupil. Mm, that looks pretty good. Now in order to animate the pupil dilating, we simply head to our first frame, hit the stopwatch on distortion percentage, crank it down to zero, We'll then scrub forward a few frames before the end of the comp and then crank it up to 100%. If we check out a preview, we now have our dilating pupil. I told you it was easy. Now before we move on to our lightning, we need to do one more thing. In the original shot, Barry's eye colour changes slightly, so let's do that too. Let's head up, grab a new adjustment layer, grab the pen tool, and we'll draw a mask around the inside of the eye. Let's then hit F and feather it out around 10 to 20 pixels. From there, Jump up to effect, color correction, and let's add a hue and saturation. So all we're going to do here is simply bump up the saturation around 50 points. It's only a subtle change, but it's enough to be noticeable. In order to animate this change, let's hit T to bring up opacity, head to the start of our comp, hit the stopwatch, crank it down to zero, go straight to the end, and then up to 100. Our last step is to parent this to our null. Now, let's check out a preview. Well, that's that part done. Okay, we've dilated that pupil. Now, let's bring the lightning. Now, I did tell a little lie in the beginning. I did say we'd reuse the old lightning from our flash running episode, but it was way, way easier just to make a new set for this effect. So be sure and download our new lightning pack down in the description. As you can see, we have a couple of solids in the lightning comp. Two are called Bloodshot Right and Bloodshot Left, and the other ones are Yellow Left and Yellow Right. Let's start with the Bloodshot. In the original shot, the red bloodshot parts of Barry's eye start to glow. So that's what these are for. So let's copy and paste them into our comp. And if it isn't already, change the transfer mode to screen. And we'll then parent those layers to our null. So as you can see, the bloodshot veins are already nicely placed in my eye. That's because I created them using this footage as a reference. But here's how you adjust them to suit your footage. We'll click on each of those layers and select the origin and place it on each corner of the eye. You can then play with the direction to suit your shot as moving the direction affects the way the lightning behaves. If you find that the lightning is a little too long or not long enough, head up here and play with those decay settings to find the appropriate length, like so. Let's then hit T, hit the stopwatch on opacity, crank it down to say 35%, scrub forward to frame 20 and then crank it up to anywhere from 80 to 100%. 
As you can see now, the vein starts to glow as our shot progresses. We'll then rinse and repeat this process for the left side. And if you like, you can duplicate those layers and add as many bloodshot veins as you like. I ended up with two on each side. Okay, now for the main event, the lightning. Let's head back to our lightning comp, select all four yellow lightning layers, copy them, and paste them into our footage comp. If you need to change the transfer modes, well, you shouldn't have to. But if you do, the ones that have add in the name, well, they're add. The others can be changed to screen, and we'll then parent those layers to our null. If they haven't pasted in the 12 frame mark, let's just adjust them to make sure they start on exactly on that 12 frame mark, like so. Then, just with our bloodshot layers, we'll adjust the origin on all of the layers to the corners of the eye. Once again, you may have to alter the decay and the direction of the lightning to stay within the bounds of the eye. You can test this by scrubbing through the timeline and seeing if your lightning jumps out of the eye at any point. If it does, adjust the direction and try again. It might take a little bit of trial and error to get this right, but it will be worth it in the end. Once you're done, the shot should look like this. Pretty cool, but we've got one more step. In the original shot, the camera zooms in just slightly. So let's do that really quick. Hit Ctrl A to select all of the layers, right click and hit pre-compose. We'll then hit S to bring up scale, hit the stopwatch, head to the end of the comp and crank it up to say 110. All that we have left then is to download the sound effect in the description, throw it in and that's another shot done. Add up all of those steps and you'll get something like this. Man, I'm so tired. But I still got a film learning to do. I gotta go to the gym. I gotta walk the dogs. <sighs> I don't think anything's getting me off this couch. We now interrupt your program to bring you all six seasons of Sex in the City. So that's my take on the Flash's lightning eyes. I know I sound like a broken record, but it's not that hard to accomplish. And unlike our previous few episodes, it requires no third party plugins to pull off. Now on a quick side note, I've noticed we've got quite a few Pete Lives hashtags on the Q&A video, and even more on the Facebook page and the Twitter. Now I know you guys don't really want to see Pete again, and you're just trolling me because you know I don't want to do it. So thankfully, there'll be no more of this foolishness. But that's my time guys. If you enjoyed the video, please like and share it. If you're new here, why not subscribe? Not only is it free, but this fake scientific study I'm pretending to hold says it helps you live longer, as does joining us on Twitter and Facebook. By the power of Lone Archer Films, I'm Tyler Lampshire, and until next time, keep learning! Keep learning! I said, keep learning!